Prime Video's Shiny Happy People documentary exposed years of systematic abuse and manipulation in Bill Gothard's IBLP cult. As former members of the cult, Bryce and I are all too familiar with the dangers of the Institute and Basic Life principles. But shockingly enough, there are still supporters of the cult, and Bryce recently chatted with one of these cult deniers. Bryce, tell me a little bit about the conversation you had with, I believe her name is Holly McLean. Yes, that's correct. And no, not from Die Hard. Um, <laughs> so I was, I, I belong to a couple of Facebook groups, okay. um, a variety of styles of ex uh, cult members. And um, I started seeing, <coughs> excuse me, people pop up and be like, who's this person? And this person messaged me and, and they want to do a documentary and they were asking me what is going on. And then people started you know, go seeming that she was more pro IVLP and pro Bill Gothard, uh, and not, you know, with everybody that's against it, so to speak. Well, yeah, because most people are, I mean, like vehemently against the cult now, uh, most ex members, but this lady was reaching out to people in these social media groups, trying to get them to be a part of a documentary that she's creating. What? That's my understanding. Okay. My understanding is she wants to do a, um, a more accurate documentary. Um, accurate. Yes. Okay. And, you know, so me being me, I'm like, I'll reach out to her. And that's what I did. I was like, hey, what's up? Well, you want to, you, would you like to come on to our show <coughs> and be interviewed? And I sent her a link. She asked for a link. I sent her a link. She watched several of our videos, made some interesting comments, but she wants to wait until her documentary is out before she goes on anybody's podcast. And I'm like, why? What? I, <laughs> What's the rationale there? That's kind of crazy. I don't, I don't know. And the interesting thing, from what I can tell, she was never part of IBLP. She was never enrolled in ATI. So she wasn't like a cult mom like Christine that we've talked to. Uh, she was just a fan of IBLP? <laughs> she was IBLP adjacent. Okay. Which we know there's a lot of those people out there, you know, that grew up in, you know, fundamental Christianity or whatever that weren't ever technically a part of the cult. Maybe right. they were, you know, part of James Dobson's group, focus on the family or, or something else. So she just has been out there promoting IBLP and denying that IBLP was a cult without ever having been a part of it that is wild well i i'm not gonna say that that is exactly what she's doing she, okay. she's not exactly doing those things i i've put together some clips for us to uh to take a glimpse she has one 16 minute video on youtube where she discusses if she was and it's interesting because she says was i in a cult mm -hmm. and then i watched the whole thing and she never she just said that she and her husband went to one of the seminars once and they had good friends that were part of it and how she kind of watched that family, you know, how the dynamics changed and she sure. you know, gathered her own uh, opinion based on. Dude, does this know, lady have kids? Person. Does she even have children? Do we know? Oh, she has children. So oh, she does. Okay. So she, she's, they definitely she could have nine kids. Yes. So they definitely could have used the advanced training Institute curriculum, the wisdom booklets. Sure. If they had wanted to, but. From what and you've honestly, gathered, you you can't tell definitively yeah. if she actually was in the cult. Right. She has not said that they were officially a part of it. I, I don't I don't know that they were. I think that hmm. they just you know shared the same values. Okay. Um so, so so you've told me a little bit about this 16 minute, let's say, podcast episode that she did. Uh, yes. I have not watched it. I haven't seen it at all. I knew that you reached out to her and I knew that, you know, she responded that she would like to be on the show, but only if you would be willing to participate in the documentary. And then only after she did the documentary, I knew right. something along those lines, but I have not gone and watched her, her video. So this will be my first time seeing it. So I'm kind of excited. Yeah. And I don't want to be in a pro no dude documentary about this stuff i, I well especially that. when you don't have any kind of creative control so she could edit you however she wanted to and yes clearly if she is if she is still supporting the shiny happy people cult at this point after everything that we've seen not just with the shiny happy people documentary on prime video but also with the new 
uh, documentary that's coming out, Until the Truth, I, I don't see how anyone could say, yeah, that was a good thing. I will definitely let her speak for herself about the things that you know you just said. Um, and I want to make it clear that we want to be objective. Sure. We want Always. anybody that wants to come on here and unless they're, you know, straight up aggressive and, you know, being rude, you know, everybody's willing to come on and, yeah. and they can say their what they want to say. <clears throat> you know, I've picked clips out of this 16 minute. People are going to say that I I messed with the whatever. But no, no, I, I picked a clip from here to here and I didn't cut it in the middle. All right? yeah. I'm just getting segments. So that David you haven't doctored the clips idea. or anything like that. And, and, and again, just to reiterate, you invited her to be on our podcast oh, yes. uh, and she was not interested. I, I will, I will never, ever want to silence anyone. Uh, like you said, if they're aggressive or, or whatever, then, you know, we have to be kind of careful with that, but I, I'm willing to talk to anyone regardless of, of their opinion or whatever information that, that they want to share. Um, exactly. you know, so I would be more than happy to have Holly on the podcast, but if she doesn't want to do that, that's obviously her prerogative, but we are going to take a look at these videos and kind of see what she's saying and, and break it down a little bit. Yes. And she is a certified parent educator. I'm not sure what that means. Um, I'm that sounds sure like a weird homeschool certification. I am a certif certified storyteller. Oh, good. You know where that certification came from i have no idea Bryce, i didn't even know that was a thing character first oh good okay but i am certified <laughs> you can put me on stage in front of well children i am I a certified a reprobate reprobate so there we go we all have something <laughs> that's what the judge said anyway <laughs> so let's uh let's see what the first clip is Generally, the IVLP teaches good things that can be used in our lives to enhance our faith and bring us closer to the kind of people God wants us to be and that we want to be. The problem with the whole thing isn't the basic principles necessarily. The problem comes in when people take these principles and misapply them or take them to an extreme. Okay, okay I'm going to pause it right there, Bryce. The problem is when you take these principles and take them to an extreme. They're already extreme. I, I mean, yeah. th th this is already kind of nonsense. These are already extreme principles. The ideas of courtship, the ideas of modesty, the purity culture aspect, all of that is already extreme. You can't tell me that believing rock music summons demons isn't extreme. I, yeah, and we don't like, we don't know what her you know, this is, this is where everybody needs to be objective. We don't know what her, um, um, definition of extreme is. You know, if she is already a fundamental Christian, you know, then she could look at this and say, oh, these, you know, I like 80% of what he's saying. Some of it is a little crazy, you know, which, so I, which know. I mean, that that's true. I, I mean, there are aspects of, I guess, uh, IBLP's teaching that you could say are are positive, right? Like the, the idea of being kind to other people. The you can rule. say that about anything. anything. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can pluck anything. I can pluck something good out of almost any cult currently in existence. Right. You could literally just be like, oh, they all, all of them really care about their families. It's like, that's a great you, thing sure. to do. Yes. <laughs> but I don't like prevent my sister from leaving until I've certified a husband for her. There, there we I go. Thank you. Her. Yeah. That's so, so this whole idea of saying, Oh, well it's people that take IBLP's teaching to an extreme. They're already extreme. I mean, what, what, what's confusing about that, but I'll, I'll continue playing this and just kind of let her finish. That's when they become a problem. And when they can skew a person's perception of God and what it means to have a truly healthy relationship with him. Some of this skewed perception is explained in Ginger's book. Although I also think some of her perception of IBLP is also skewed because of the application of some of the principles that happened in her life and in the life of her family and what she called an overactive conscience. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> an overactive <laughs> conscience. I wonder, I wonder how Ginger got an overactive conscience. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was the extreme abuse that was rampant 
in her household. And and just for folks that don't know what we're referencing here, she's talking about the Duggar family. Yeah. And and the Duggar family, they were popular on TLC's 19 Kids and Counting, a uh, wildly popular TV show, but under the surface there was just this disgusting pattern of abuse in the family. Uh and the Shiny Happy People documentary kind of dove into that and exposed it. Um so what this Overactive lady Holly is saying, I mean, what the that, hell, dude? That's such a honestly though, that's a great <laughs> that's a great phrase for like, yeah, I feel guilty about everything all the time. I have an overactive conscience, so I'm gonna need special circumstances here at work. You know, I could just start feeling guilty out of the blue and I'm gonna have to go home early. I don't know. I overactive conscience. Uh, I mean, questioning anything that ginger was saying in her book after what ginger has been through at the hands of her own brother like already this lady disgusts me just her initial approach here well as long as you don't take ibl's peach t iblp's teachings to the extreme it's okay I, that that part just immediately blows my mind i i mean women were the primary victims in the shiny happy people cult and she's sitting there as a woman defending the principles that exploited women for years that just i, I mean but it, she kind of is a mother of nine children which yeah. means that you have power over nine people and yeah. you know if you if you like the way that iblp tells you to do things then you're in complete control i wonder what the power dynamic between her and her husband is I bet that's, you she runs that house with an iron fist, dude. That's the thing that people haven't really talked about too much, where it's like they all think that the dad is like no, Jim Bob. yeah, and it's mm -mm. like no, no. And I don't even, I don't think, I don't even know if it's fifty fifty or what the case may be. As far as like in some cases, the the mother is just super gung ho and she mm -hmm. is all about it, and the dad's just alone for the ride. And the other way, sometimes the other way around. Sometimes they're totally on board together. So it is very random uh, as far as who's running what show but i can almost guarantee that holly is running the show in her house and she keeps her husband very firmly in line if if her husband is still around i mean do you know do you know what the situation is there Bryce? I don't. do you know okay i'm not gonna right. speculate i'm not gonna yeah, speculate. let's let's not speculate on that okay so that first clip just just seeing that was pretty upsetting <laughs> that's the mild one that's the oh it gets worse dude does this get and progressively I, so, worse and just to be clear everybody i'm going to play like light devil's advocate on behalf of holly to try to continue with our objectiveness here okay you know i don't know Davey's, if i can Davey's be coming at it this lady very yeah. strong yeah i've watched it i've thought things through very carefully so i'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate with her and that's she dances she that's dances totally fine that, and we'll keep that in mind that you're not necessarily defending her you're just playing that devil's advocate role because once again this is my first time seeing this stuff so that first clip i, I mean i'm kind of shocked <laughs> i can't i can't believe that's the mild stuff <sighs> okay so yeah. should we just go ahead and play the second let's, clip here let's get into the second one okay problem with the way some have applied the things taught at IBLP conferences is that they took things to an extreme. Another problem that's happened with the IBLP is that some people who have attended the conferences and embraced the whole organization also began to see Bill Gothard as a deity type figure. That he was speaking for God himself and they saw him as a prophet. When people begin to see leaders in this way, the organization often begins to act like more of a cult than of a Christian organization promoting good character. Well, yeah, no shit. In, in all kinds of religious cult type organizations. I mean, look at Mormonism. For instance, every leader in Mormonism is called a prophet. What were our character qualities? What what were, no, it, that's not what it was called. Uh, when you were a mercy or a, a prophet, what, what was that called? Uh, spiritual gift. Yeah, literally, what were our spiritual gifts in the cult? You had a prophet. That's actually what they called certain personalities. Then there was the mercies and the servants and the, what was the other one? Teachers, I guess. <coughs> Teacher, point. organizer, mercy, servant, prophet. Yeah. But the, oh, the wow. key, the operative word being prophet. That's yeah. literally 
what they called people in the cult. She is saying that people look to Bill Gothard as a prophet, as she also used the word deity, but that's yeah. exactly what the cult advocated. That's what they said. Right. No, so, well, and the cult is always going to say that Mr. Gothard never claimed to be a prophet and he never claimed to do this. He never, yeah, but every year he fasted and came back and said, I spoke to God. Yes. <laughs> it's like, well, if that's not a prophet, then I don't know. Dude, I, I mean, <laughs> we took everything that he taught at face value. This is yeah. the correct interpretation of the Bible. Bill Gothard's teachings, that is what he would have claimed. That's what he still claims. What am I saying? Uh, so, so, I mean, if if we're not supposed to look at him as a prophet or an interpreter or whatever you want to call it, what are we supposed to look at him as? What do you think would have happened if while I was working at the training center, I went down on a Saturday morning wearing shorts and a T-shirt mm -hmm. and um, was just going to walk out the door and get my car? So, well, what are you doing? I was like, oh, well, I, I mean, I believe one, two, three, and eight, but I don't believe in four, six. I don't believe those things. But so I'm just going to live the life how I should be living it. And I like some of what he says, but I think I should be able to wear my shorts on a Saturday. It's cool, right? No. I mean, Bryce, make it even simpler than that. What if you just questioned what Bill Gothard taught in the basic seminar? What if you said, oh, well, I don't know if that, that doesn't seem exactly right to me. That doesn't seem like the correct interpretation of that verse. Well, yeah. I mean, what would happen in a scenario like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you pick and choose, picking and choosing violates whatever rule you're trying to avoid. You're like, oh, well, I'll do this, not that. It's like, oh, but if you do this and not that, then you're breaking this rule over here. We were taught not to question authority. Exactly. I, I mean... If if I had if I had said to my parents, well, I don't think that Bill Gothard's interpretation of the rules of modesty is accurate and women shouldn't be required to wear dresses, that would have been rebelliousness, pride, because I think that I'm right. And, you know, here we have this great teacher that's told us, based on scripture, that women should wear dresses. I, I mean, if he's not a prophet or the absolute authority. I can understand where he would never have claimed to be a deity. I, I get that as far as what she's saying, but he absolutely set himself up as a prophet and as the absolute authority uh, in terms of interpreting and teaching what the Bible said. So yeah. that that's so that's so disingenuous of her. So here's my here's my devil's advocate. If she truly was never part of this organization at all. Yep. And her only true um, exposure was her very good friend. Um, then kind of like even my own mother and maybe even your parents, if they, they did not live and experience training center life and being under that kind of a thing, then, you know, my mom was always like, well, if it was so bad, you know, why didn't you say anything? And which our reply was, well, we thought we were doing the Lord's work. Yes, we thought exactly. This and, is and, what we were supposed to do. And, and that's what this cult set up. You and I know that, Bryce. You can't question. Yeah. And if you can't question, if your authority's word is absolute, what does that make them? Yeah. Basically exactly. God. A dictator. A dictator. Basically yeah. God. So if Bill Gothard is the absolute authority in, in this cult, then he is essentially God. And that's the bottom line. So did technically anyone call Bill Gothard a deity? No. No. But the way the cult was structured, the rules that were in place, the principles that were enforced, it absolutely set him up as a prophet and, and maybe even a god. I mean, this this is ridiculous what she's saying because that was the whole point. That was exactly. the whole point of the cult. Obey without question. This I I don't know if she's intentionally being ignorant here. I don't, I think she's justifying what she wants to believe. Yeah, that that's probably true. Like she she wants to believe these principles so bad that she will do whatever it takes for the intention of the the cult to be good. 
Yeah. That, that's basically what the intention the, yeah, the of intent. IBLP, the intention of the shiny happy people cult was good, but people just <laughs> people just worship Bill Gothard too much. That 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 I just realized that little nuance to it. She's basically blaming the victims here. Yes, it gets. You worse. believed Bill Gothard too much. That's yeah. the problem. She wants us to think independently in an in a organization that uh, tells us that we absolutely should not think independently. Yeah. <laughs> this is just <laughs> so backwards. Uh, she's got she yeah. I, I I think definitely you're you're right in in your opinion on this, Bryce, that she she just wants to believe what she believes so bad that she has to justify. But it's coming across as very intentionally ignorant. Um, it, and it, insensitive, but yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but cold moms don't she's care about that. She's probably a prophet. Fundamental she's, Christians don't care about that. Oh, yeah, she, yeah. She, she's definitely a prophet for sure. But she would probably call herself a mercy or something like that. Good Lord. Okay, so next clip. We ready? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Now, if you watch Shiny Happy People, you'll see that the whole so-called documentary has ominous music in the background. It highlights people who believe they were harmed by their interaction with Christianity and IBLP and focuses on some of the accusations of misconduct by Bill Gothard. Okay. <laughs> It has <laughs> ominous music in the background. So you're what trying was... to make your podcast upbeat and uplifting. So you're playing this weird Sesame Street music in the background. <laughs> What's the difference? It's just, <laughs> it's ambiance. That's all it is. You crazy and lady. It is something that has been a part of, you know, docu documentaries and doc it's, it's, it's part of production. You use music to emphasize certain things. And yes, it is going to sway and play. On what your part of what Josh Duggar did to his sisters wasn't evil and disgusting. Do you, I'm sorry. Do, do we want to play hopscotch or, or heart and soul or whatever hot cross buns behind this, this story of the absolute evil of Josh Duggar? What, what would you like ma'am? Yeah, she called it a so-called documentary, but it's an award-nominated documentary. Yeah, it's nominated for a Critics' Choice Award. It's incredibly well done. Yes. Um, you know, she said that these people that believe they were harmed by Christianity, it's like, what do you mean believed? <laughs> yes. <Dude>. Just <laughs> insane. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's keep playing it. Which may or may not be true. Some of his actions may have been misinterpreted and some may not. Though the accusers tried to sue Gothard in court, all charges were eventually dropped and dismissed by the accusers. Whoa, dude. Whoa. <laughs> Look, we can't believe what they say or what they think they thought that they saw. And it's what I'm is sure happening? Twilight Zone. This is insane. So not only is she questioning the victims here? She's also questioning whether Gothard did anything at all. So why did he resign? Why is there a history that goes all the way back to the 70s? That leadership knew about. That people yeah. warned Lindsay Williams about. What? Warned but did not prevent. No, yeah, of course. Okay. Um... The, the whole thing about the lawsuits being dropped. We already know why that happened. Holly. Yeah. There's a lot more to why it was dropped. Yes. Than the fact that she, they, they are making it sound like the victims were lying. Mm -hmm. And so they dropped. And then Mr. Gothard had to sue to prove his innocence. Really? Why, why would he have to sue? If the thing was dropped, then why he is he still involved in multiple lawsuits? With IBLP. I, I swear this lady is being intentionally ignorant. Or like you say, Bright, do you think she's maybe doing this just for shock value? Does this video know. even have a lot of views? Um, Not really. 
Okay. No. What, real quick, let me just tell everyone, do not go and watch this video. Don't go watch the whole thing because that will only, don't go comment on it. Don't go dislike it because any engagement on this video of Holly's is just going to push it out to more people. So just ignore her channel entirely and just watch yeah, the clips from this we're not channel. To cancel her. We are not trying to cancel no. her. Let her she say whatever she wants. Free to use the platform as we use it. Absolutely. So people, by all means, leave her alone. It's fine. I just don't want to give her any more exposure than yeah. she's already received. Uh, okay, let, let's keep playing. This You're right. This stuff, it was mild to start out with. Now <laughs> I'm just furious. Uh, what the hell? Okay. Authored unsuccessfully, tried to counter Sue to prove his innocence. So I'm not here to defend or to support Mr. Gothard. I'm also not here to defend or support the youth homes that IBLP had to try to help troubled youth. My point is that the documentary was not an honest look at the organization at all, or of the Duggar family for that matter. It was actually just a hit piece. And I believe from reading Ginger's book that the portrayal this film gave by editing her comments may not have been what she intended it to look like because it made her look like she was generally unhappy with her upbringing and with Christianity. And that's not what she said in her book. What? Do we know if that's factual or not that the Duggars appearance, the Duggars that chose to participate in the documentary and be interviewed for the documentary that they were not happy with the finished I product? Know. I don't know, but but listen, people, I mean, that is that's going to that's what happens every day on the news, okay? It happens all the time. People are going to documentaries either are very biased in their approach or they're trying to be unbiased. This one was definitely like, these are the Duggars. This mm -hmm. is what's going on. This is the organization they came from. So I'm sure that it was edited to um, support their, yes. their viewpoint. To a, um, to a degree, yes. A degree, but at the but same also, time, they offered to have everyone on the documentary. From what I understand, uh, they reached out to Bill Gothard to have him on the documentary. I think, I think it said that in the... Uh, at the end of the documentary that he chose not to participate. Yeah. You kind of, you have to make the offer so that you can put it in your documentary and be like, right. They said they didn't want to talk to us. Um, yeah. I, I mean, so, so without knowing, you know, how the Duggars that, that did participate in the documentary actually felt about the finished product um, to say that it was a hit piece. Yeah. That was like, what? In what way was it a hit piece? It was incredibly informative. A, a hit piece on who? A hit piece on Jim Bob Duggar? A hit, a hit piece on Josh Duggar? A hit piece on Gothard? A, hot, a hit piece on IBLP? Who, who, who was the target of the hit here, Holly? That's incredibly ignorant. I keep using that word because she is incredibly ignorant. Uh, dude, this does just get worse and worse and worse, bro. Unreal. Yeah. It, it doesn't, I don't know, it, it, somebody, she's, she's trying to present her own narrative. She's doing to, in this video, what she's pitching the documentary is doing. It's like, yes. uh, you know, I don't want to, I didn't want to believe that this stuff was happening either. I, you know, and then to realize I was a part of it, basically promoting it, putting yeah. my own time and sweat and mm -hmm. money into it and to find out that all this was going on. And this isn't just people that I just, I, you know, I know these people and I lived it and you went through some of it. So it's just, you can't just deny, you know, it's like this when, I, when one of my favorite comedians was accused of certain things, I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, that can't be true. There's two, two people accusing. I was like, no, not that comedian. You don't want to awesome. believe it, right? You don't want to believe it. You really don't. But when 20 people come forward and make the accusation, when there's 22 people in a lawsuit, this not like Bill Gothard has a ton of money. Whatever riches there are tied up in the organization. Well, you know, always... I mean, yeah, the the I, IBLP was obligated to defend him because at the time he was the director, the, you know, of the cult. And yeah. so I'm sure they had insurance in place for directors and officers coverage. Um, and, and so he was going to be fine as far as his defense and, you know, potential countersuit. Yeah. Um, 
you, you know, I, I want to, I, I, you know, the whole thing about like if two people come forward versus 20 people coming forward, even if it's just two, though, you got to take a look at it. Oh, yeah. You Absolutely. know, let's let's find out what's going on here. And that's kind of how it started with Recovering Grace when the accusations initially started coming out. It was just a couple. It was a trickle of accusation that turned into a river that ultimately took down Bill Gothard. Exactly. Um, I mean, this, this whole, this whole victim blaming mentality that she has is really, really dangerous. It's, I mean, that's, that is one, as we've discussed, Bill Gothard did not invent the wheel. All right. Yeah. He, there's a foundation of this that is prominent through conservatism Mm -hmm. and Bill Gothard and many others, they just, they take that, they apply their own stink to it (laughs) and then they serve it up. Yep. But it's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, this is, it's, it's the same ice cream, just a different flavor, you know? Yeah. Um, Okay. So let's, let's keep watching this. I don't even know. I don't know. How many clips did you say you had, Bryce? Eight. Eight clips. <laughs> We've only watched three, and I'm already losing my mind. Okay, let's let's watch the next one. Also, all the people interviewed for the expose were people who had personal problems and seemed to blame all of their woes on the fact that their families participated in IBLP, which is very unrealistic, in my opinion. There are millions of people with the same types of problems as they described that never heard of Bill Gothard or IBLP. So to equate all their problems to this isn't reasonable. The film treats all who dislike IBLP as the ones who see the truth and all those who are involved in it as cultists. <laughs> that what? one, I was when she said that stuff, I was like, you can't, you were, you were taking something so far out of context you know, Davey, do you think that your life would have turned out differently if you had never been put in an isolation room for a week? Yes. I mean, I mean let's, sure? let's you go. make those choices yourself. Let's let's take it even further back. Do I think my life would have been any different if my parents had never gone to the basic seminar and ultimately joined the shiny happy people cult? Absolutely. My life would have turned out very differently. Now, what I will say, I I don't subscribe to the idea that, well, now I'm allowed to be, you, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, just victimized person for the rest of my life. I want to move past the trauma that I've been through. I want to deal with that in a healthy way. Lord knows I didn't for a long time. But the fact of the matter is, has she not heard anything that some of these survivors have said about the work that they've done to move past the anger and the trauma and the the fear uh, it's it's like it's like she's got intentional blinders on uh, other people have had a lot worse done to them and and you know they came out okay it's like other people let's find those people and let's just see if outside of what you've seen through some camera or passing on the street this person that has gone through the same type of things it's actually doing as great as they portray themselves because we portrayed ourselves to be perfectly fine for a long time yes absolutely dude because we just buried it deep down yeah i I mean once again this this whole idea that you know we shouldn't wallow in our victimization absolutely agree with that Let's let's deal with it in a healthy way. I don't want to stay traumatized. I want to be a happy, healthy person. Yeah. Um, but to say that, oh, well, your trauma had nothing to do with being in a cult. The issues that you have in life had nothing to do with the way that you were raised. What are you talking about, you psycho? If we were to just take a snapshot of my own family, just like on my, my dad's side of the family, Everybody else, and obviously nobody's perfect. I don't know the details, and I'm fine not knowing. I love my relatives. But that side of the family, like everybody went to college. Everybody went out and got a career. They all own houses, you know, and I have none of those things. I'm doing well, 
Yeah. I have done well for myself. I acknowledge that. But what if, man? Mm -hmm. What if I had had that chance? Because I never feel like I'm very books book smart educated smart all of that my knowledge is i've gotten on my own but what if i had had the opportunity where would i be what if you had a a, a more traditional education yeah. you know what if you you learned more from an academic perspective went you know went on to higher education what could have possibly been different in your life and and i don't I don't even like to think about some of that because I'm oh, very yeah. happy with my life. I I don't I don't regret anything that I've been through. There's some stuff that I wish I I hadn't been through. Obviously, I wish I hadn't been locked in solitary confinement for a week at a cult compound. Um but all of that has brought me to where I am today and I'm very grateful for where I am today. But there are there are things that I went through, things that you've been through, Bryce, things that guests uh, on this podcast that we've talked to have been through that are horrific and, and yeah. absolutely wish that we could have avoided those moments in our life. Yeah, um, but I mean, if you're under the age of 18 and you're completely isolated and on the outside, everything looks great. Who's going to, who's going to rescue you? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> who's going to save you from the actual hell that you're living in? No, she will tell you that you should save yourself. It's well, that's like, kind of what it sounds like. But and, 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 we and don't know that we need saving. How would we know? <laughs> it's all that we know. We're intentionally shielded from anything external. And anything so, external should be not believed, should be looked at right. with suspicion. Mm -hmm. Don't trust your gut. By the authorities. Your, your evil nature, your sinful nature is lying to you at all times. You know, I, I will say one thing. I... I agree that there are people who struggle with, you know, various issues that haven't been through this type of trauma, but everyone experiences trauma differently. Everyone has different experiences. So I don't even understand what point she's trying to make there. It's, I mean, the, the point that we have always made on this channel is like, we get it, our you and I's experience mm -hmm. would be way down here compared to everybody else's experiences way up here. We get it. Mm -hmm. However, our trauma is our trauma. Yes. You know, this is something that I realized <laughs> when I was at a table once and the girl was like, I don't understand why people keep talking about this. They should just get over it. And it like seared down into my soul. It was like, I want to, Yeah. I want to get over it. But this, this is my trauma that I went through. Mm -hmm. And while it's not as bad as others, it was the worst for me. Yeah. You know, it didn't go above that. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have those experiences, but what I did experience was not great. Life is just so, a series of personal experiences. I, I mean, I, 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 I truly don't understand the point that she's trying to make here other than just saying, basically what she's saying is get over it. The yeah. problems that you're experiencing had nothing to do with growing up in the cult. It has everything to do with you just can't handle life is basically what she's person. saying. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Has she spoken to Lindsay? <laughs> Lindsay is the opposite of a weak person. Clearly, clearly she does not have an objective opinion on this. Uh, yeah. She she wants the teachings of IBLP and the shiny happy people cult to be true so badly that she will say whatever she needs to say. It's it's like you said, Bryce, she is just in justification mode right now. Um, okay, let's, let's do the next one. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I I could see the thumbnail on the next one. Uh, and I'm already I'm already dreading what she's about to say here. So I want to talk a little bit about my experiences with IBLP. I had a very close friend whose family was involved in IBLP as far as being followers of the teachings and attending the conferences. They invited my husband and I to attend. We found it fascinating and the concepts and teachings to be very spot on as far as Christianity goes. The only thing that we questioned from what we had seen was the umbrella of authority concept and the idea that there was a problem with music dissonance. The authority concept seemed good, other than it looked like something that could be taken to an extreme if applied, especially when the husband or father 
was not acting in a godly manner. So the idea that the man would be a provider and protector was good, of course. But submission to his authority had to be limited to his behavior, which didn't seem to be adequately addressed in the material. Okay, so she's she's kind of right about that. Um, yes, it was an environment that was built for predatory behavior and abuse. She She is right about that aspect. But what she's failing to realize here is that's the whole foundation of the cult. So you can't just say, well, that part was problematic, but everything else about it was was fine. No, yeah. that was the whole thing. <laughs> what? So, it, so, so should you just keep going to these seminars and giving these seminars and this organization money and your time just so you could pluck a few things that you feel are, are really cool? <laughs> I, I mean, she's saying that their interpretation of the Bible seemed good. Yeah. So that means everything about the purity culture part, everything about the modesty. I don't even understand what she was talking about with the musical dissonance. Was she I've referring never, I, to yeah, rock music there? I, she I don't mentioned know. that later as well. I didn't get the clip on it because I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. Yeah, I, but if this band sounds cool, musical dissidents, I would, I'd go check them out. Right. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the blinders that she has on here are so apparent to me because she wants to say that the absolute authority idea was problematic if, if taken to an extreme. But the absolute authority piece of the shiny, happy people cult was what enabled the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, that was the foundation of the cult was the umbrella of authority. It was in mm -hmm. every seminar. It was referenced back every time there was an issue. Well, you're probably just not under your authority. And that's why you're suffering with this particular problem or why you made this mistake or, or whatever. That was always the go-to was the umbrella of authority. Mm -hmm. I, I just, it was, it was the number one for sure. It just blows my mind. It blows my mind that she doesn't see that correlation, but it's just in, in almost every fundamental Christian thing. I don't think nobody, nobody's ever said obey your authority as long as they're uh, under the will of God and they're cool. It's like, no, it's just obey the authority. I mean, if you pressed, if you pressed, I think a lot of religious organizations, they, they would absolutely say like they, they have to be, you know, in good standing, doing the right thing or yeah, in good standing or, or whatever you want to call like who doing God's that? will. They do. That's the whole problem. <laughs> Dude, my eye is switching right now. <laughs> because of this lady. I don't know if you can tell, but no. I keep I keep like trying to fix my eye because it's twitching uncontrollably because this lady is so bonkers. And she's doing and the way that she's presenting all of this, she's like trying to keep herself distanced, but mm -hmm. she's but kind of failing at that. To, to your point earlier in the episode, I think you're right, dude. I don't think she was ever in the cult. No. So, so basically she's just looking at, I don't even know what she's looking maybe their website now or, or just remembrances of, of her observations of her from her. Yeah. From her friend that was in the cult, dude, what would, what would our, uh, initial podcast have been like if we had never been involved, there would have been like one episode. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, and there were plenty of those too, like people that had never been in the cult, but were like, well, here's, here's my opinion on it. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the whole the whole thing of calling this documentary shiny, happy people. Let's think about that for a second. So her opinion is based on probably observations of her family friend, right? Yeah, of course, it was going to look good on the outside because that's what we did present well, the shiny, happy exterior. Yes. But to be fair, she did. not She went into detail a little bit with her friend about how they used to invite that family over. And there was like an incident where somebody broke a rule and instead of just admonishing the child, like, Hey, don't break that rule. They had to have like a huge meeting and get her. And I remember those and you know, I was like, Oh, you were being rebellious. It's like, no, maybe mm -hmm. they just needed the rule told again or explained. And she said that eventually they couldn't invite this family over again because like the mother would have the kids come every 15 minutes and report to her to make sure that they were 
in line. <laughs> so they eventually stopped inviting these people over because it wasn't fun at all. When- oh, weird. The family that was actually in the cult seemed a little nutty, <laughs> but you still have no anymore. problem with it. <laughs> the cult itself, the cult's teaching are still fine. It was yeah. just this family, you know, became a little too much. I wonder, I wonder why. <laughs> Proving yeah. our point. Um, we, we have a lot of relatives and friends after this thing came out. They're like, oh, that's why you were. So, yeah, that's why we weren't fine. Yeah. That, that's why, yeah, that's why we weren't fine. <laughs> yeah. That's why you were a bummer to be around. Um, okay. We still got three more clips here. Um, hopefully my, my eye stopped switching here momentarily. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and watch this next one. Then I looked at myself. Was I doing that too? Did I make a law that I should wear dresses all the time? Yes, I did. I had decided that this was a law. And even if I was uncomfortable at times or my legs were cold because they were exposed to winter, I still felt I had to wear a dress. But why? I realized I had started to make laws that God didn't make for me. Okay, pause right here. You know what? I think I'm actually beginning to completely agree with her point of view because that music just made me emotionally (laughs) vulnerable at that time. And I think that it's swaying me to, you know, towards her opinion. The the clip of the the sad girl. (laughs) Did that make you feel sad too? It's weird. Royalty free. (laughs) Yeah, professionally shot. So she's saying... God didn't make the law about wearing dresses. She made the law. Okay, cool. In the cult, that was the law. That was it. Yeah. And a little bit before where I cut, she also talked about like the length of her hair. She had long hair. She's like, I wanted to wear my oh, hair Oh, she long. didn't always have a lady cop haircut? That's cool. No, okay. no, no. She, she a lovely bouffant. I meant to it that earlier. I mean, you hit a certain age. And it's like, this just shows up. I think you just go to sleep and you wake up, boom, it's there. I've actually been thinking about doing a cut similar to this, as a matter of fact, with the bangs. I will, um, I will disown you. Okay, cool. Break your camera. That's good to know. <laughs> and we're going to address, by the way, we're going to address the weird shrine in the background. That's I don't know me. what's going on back there. That's you. I'm That's your sure face she, yeah, on a weird bulldog. It. it looks like it. Animal. So An strange. older version of me with a... With See, there we go. And it looks like she's got the classic live, laugh, love poster in the background. So that's not cliche at all. But yeah, she's saying she made this rule for herself. She made this law for herself. But if you were in the shiny, happy people cult, this was strictly enforced. And it was God's will for modesty. That is what we were taught. Yeah. So, I mean, what she she's she's validating the points that we're making here. But maybe I just... Haven't let her finish yet, so so let's keep watching here. I had made laws unto myself, just like she was doing. God does give us laws that are there to make our burden lighter because they come to bear fruit in our lives and draw us closer to Him and His will in our lives, which also brings us joy. I began to see that these laws I made had become a burden, not a joy, and that an overactive conscience can cause a person to make all kinds of unnecessary restrictions on themselves. So I decided that this was not right and I needed to make a change. That overactive conscious. What are you going to do? She decided that her strict interpretation of scripture needed to change. That's wish, crazy. Oh, that's that's wish crazy. Everybody could have done that. Right? <laughs> you know what? We've been at 11 maybe we should dial it back a little uh uh, she (laughs) she's explaining the problems in the cult's ideology yes it was very legalistic in the shiny happy people cult that was a big part of the problem um and it just so happened that a lot of those laws as she called them created this environment that promoted manipulation and abuse yeah i mean how does she not see that she's essentially arguing against herself here i think the next clip is gonna <clears throat> you're gonna have two twitchy eyes if it's the one <sighs> I remember. okay um, okay well let's let's watch that one then let's put it out it's 
people who get deeply into the IBLP concepts. The concepts themselves are good ones, but the application can cause problems when each thing is taken to an extreme. Something I have to add here. She and most of the people involved in the IBLP are very sincere and wanting to do the right thing and to raise their children in a godly Christian way. They truly want to do the best for them. They love their children with all their hearts and they work very hard to be the best. Okay, I'm going to pause it right be. there. <laughs> Just the stock footage that she's using. We saw a lady in a tank top. That's not modest. That wouldn't be allowed in the shiny happy people cult. So why are you showing a happy family that is clearly in violation of the shiny happy people cult rules? It's not a lot of stock footage for conservative Christians. Ooh, I guess we should not. start a website. <laughs> Conservative stock <laughs> footage.com. <laughs> Fundy footage. We would make so much money, bro. <laughs> Dude, I, I just like, like it, it just blows me away how disingenuous she's being here. Yeah. Uh, and, and yes, I agree. My parents, absolutely, their goal was to raise me in a good way. They wanted what was best for me. Yes, we've always said that. But by becoming involved in this extremely repressive, oppressive cult, they ended up doing the opposite uh, of what they set out to do. I would like her interpretation of the umbrella thing is like, where is the ability to have it an extreme and have it not a, an extreme? Yeah, where do you draw that line? And and also, can you please elaborate which IBLP principles are good? Mm. Is is it just the respecting and obeying your parents as long as you don't take that to an extreme? Is it modesty as long as you don't require people to wear dresses like wh where 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 does the neckline need to fall is the purity culture a good principle up until like kissing like kissing's okay but the minute you move past second base then we've got a problem like it just n none of what she's saying makes any sense because i don't even think she knows what she's saying here uh but we'll no. keep watching and, and kind of see where she ends up these are really good people so by sharing my experiences, I'm not in any way saying these bad, these are bad people and that they are purposefully damaging their children. But I do believe the extremes can cause damage when they don't realize it. And also I want to stress right here that no matter how well you raise a child, they have the ultimate say in what they believe and how they will behave when they grow up. Whoa, okay. They have the ultimate say in what they believe and how they grow up. How? Yeah. How? Yeah, yeah. But what did she say right before that? She said, um, you know, some some people are influenced if they are raised in the extreme. It's like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that destroys your next phrase. It's like, we are products of our environment. Exactly. How, how am I in control as a child? As a child, how am I in control of how I turn out? You know, interesting... I, I wanted to. I, I watched a little bit of a clip of one of her other videos, trying to get like a more rounded thing, and it was on like uh, your kids having a tantrum, and she was advocating, you know, that your child is having a tantrum, so their emotions are out of control, and some people think that kids don't understand what's going on. She's like, no, you could teach them; they can learn to control their emotions. And I'm like, how do you do that without applying? And she said she didn't spank, but I'm like, how do you do that without? bending your bending their will breaking that child it's like they don't they can't learn to control their emotions when no they're, they're kids four. they're kids what they can learn is fear eventually they'll learn how to control their emotions if they're given the yeah. proper tools and coping mechanisms yeah but otherwise um, they can have fear and that can appear to control their emotions because they're afraid yeah it's just you know growing up in this cult we were taught rigidly what to think, what to believe, and how to act. Uh, how in the world do you have any control over what you ultimately believe if you are taught this stuff so strictly? That's all we yeah. were exposed to, Bryce. So how would we have had any kind of well-rounded opinion 
when that's all we were taught. There was no objectivity in the cult. It was, this is the truth. This is what you will believe. Because it's the absolute truth. I just and it came from our parents and they put us in the seminars where you just sit there and this was pre iPhone. Yeah. We had to listen. You yes. Can't escape it. Correct. Um, there's still a little bit left in this clip, but already she's just completely destroyed her own argument. So we'll keep yeah. going and hear her out. What things they will allow into their lives. So the fact that one of the Duggar children became well known for his secret deviant sexual behavior does not mean all that the Duggars did was wrong or ill-advised, and that can't be blamed, blamed on IBLP either. They had 19 children, and so far, the outcome of their upbringing has been well above average. Generally, they have raised many good children who are responsible citizens and try to do their best in that the world. That is hilarious because in the Duggars case, she's basically saying one bad apple doesn't spoil the whole bunch. Right. And that's yeah. also what she's trying to say about IBLP. Um, but if you look at the actions, if you look at the outcome of what the shiny, happy people cult, the principles and teachings actually promoted and enabled, it's it's it repeats itself. There's a there's a pattern here. It's a pattern of abuse. And this this is wasn't not an isolated deviant family. behavior. Yeah, no, no, this happened a lot. This just happened on film. Right. And and the Duggar family did try to cover it up. Yeah. And every it seems like every Duggar kid that ages out breaks away. They're like, oh, I'm free. <laughs> yeah. And, and and granted, I, I think a lot of them are probably still practicing Christians. So if yeah. that's what she means by you, you know, it all turned out fine. Okay, but I, I mean, the oldest Duggar girls are scarred for life on this stuff. And and granted, they're they're gonna deal with their trauma, and hopefully, you know, move through it in, in a in a healthy and productive way. But she is failing to realize that the principles of the cult enabled all of this abuse. I just. How do you not see that? Because you weren't in it. Because you weren't a part of it. Because you desperately want this person that you looked up to to not have committed these crimes. Yeah. You and me both. <laughs> uh, the, the, her whole argument that, you know, we are our own people. She, she's right. Uh, theoretically. Right. But growing up in the cult that we grew up in, we weren't. That's why kids we, live at home until they're well into their 20s. The people, okay, our parents that signed up for this, how they were raised and how their parents treated them is what influenced them to join this thing. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have had a super religious, you know, not abusive in the fifties, but in today's standard. And so you get out and you're just like, Oh, here's something that backs up all of the things that I want to do. All of the yeah. ways I want to protect my family. Mm -hmm. That's all that that's all my mom. My mom just wanted to protect her family, yep. to have me not influenced by education of the world, you know, so that I would grow up to be a godly young man. She whatever. was doing what she thought she was right. Yeah, she she was. And, and so were my parents. They were doing the best they could with the information, and the experience that they had. But saying that intentions basically make everything that happened OK. Is insane. Yeah, J just because your parents, my parents, the family that she knew, just because they had good intentions does not justify what the shiny happy people cult was doing. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, basically that's the only argument that she has because it seems like she does have a problem with a lot of these principles 
being applied in her words to an extreme degree, but that's exactly what we did. That's what everyone did. The, the way that she is arguing essentially nullifies everything that she's saying. Um, okay, we have one more clip. Let's do it. So let's get through this one last clip here. And how many people have begun a life full of sexual deviant behavior and were not raised in a large Christian IBLP family? Lots. So those who point to IBLP or the Duggars or Christianity as the culprit, as this so-called documentary did, need only to look at those who have the same problems and were not involved with any of that. I would suggest that before you make a judgment about IBLP or the Duggars family, you don't just listen to hit pieces like shiny happy people or interviews with hosts who already have a biased attitude. And you don't just listen to someone who has a one-sided opinion about it all. Okay, so let, let's just address real quick. I'm looking forward to being in her next video. What about you? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so I agree that there are people that turn out bad that didn't grow up in the shiny happy people cult, obviously. I mean, let, let's look at serial killers throughout history. Most of them probably did not grow up in a cult. Um, but that that's a straw man argument. That's basically taking the, the idea that, you know, just because there's people out there that are evil, that didn't grow up in a cult, that we can't blame any of this on the cult. That's ridiculous. Evil by whose definition? Let's just say an evil person. Interpret that however you want. Let's say a Josh Duggar or a Richard yeah. Ramirez or a Jeffrey Dahmer, or any of these guys, right? Let's just say the, these are evil people. Josh Duggar grew up in a cult. Richard Ramirez didn't. Well, because Richard Ramirez didn't grew up in, grow up in a cult, we can't blame anything on the shiny happy people cult now. That's <laughs> ludicrous. What are you saying? I, I just... I, I, the, the Just from a, a standpoint of logical arguments she's so far off base here i don't know how more unbiased our our little thing could be is it's so unbiased i had almost zero direct contact with gothard i wasn't at headquarters i yep. wasn't in his sphere of influence at all and yet i heard whisperings yeah let's let's finish the clip instead read up on it from both sides and learn more one of the problems with the way things are portrayed in the media is that things are usually skewed, sensationalized, and biased one way or the other. In the end, I believe IBLP has some good concepts when applied in moderation, that the Duggar parents did their best and worked hard to raise a good Christian family and be a good witness, and that those who see it as all bad or all good are not looking at the whole picture. So is the whole IBLP organization a cult or not? Actually, it can be treated as a cult and some people involved become cult-like in their belief in it. But others can see the good things taught and apply them in ways that grow their character and their faith. It all depends on what you decide to do with what you learn from it. Remember that not everything is all bad or all good. Context matters. Oh, big revelation at the end. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think my 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 uh, non biased approach a little out the window there, but I was just like, dude, my bullshit meter is out of control right now. This is she's nuts. Dude. Context, of course it matters. Obviously, it matters. That's not what anyone is saying. What we're saying is, you look at this objectively. Look at the look at IBLP objectively. It doesn't pass the sniff test for not being a cult. And it certainly doesn't pass any type of scientific evaluation for not being a cult. It is a cult. Were there some people yeah. in, in this cult that maybe weren't as fervent as, as others? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there were, but oh, it was, this was like your, a choose your own adventure cult. Yeah. <laughs> because it wasn't strictly a church. It was a ministry. Well, and they didn't, they didn't have requirements. Like you, they didn't make you go 
to a training center or make you go to the conference. It was better if you did. Yeah. You, you had a family advisor who would make note. Uh huh. You did. But it wasn't a full. No, I think. Well, actually, I think the only requirements was to go to the basic seminar, the advanced seminar. I think that was like the only requirement. If okay. I recall. Um, then you'd have to shave and prove that you were godly, I guess. But yeah, it, but. It, you know, I don't know. It's. It's not coming off super unbiased. She's she is trying to play the unbiased card and but but the whole time all she says is that oh you can take it to the extreme but everybody else who's speaking negatively is uh, they're wrong and they're they're they had an extreme experience. Otherwise, uh, yeah. or, I mean, or it's their fault fine. because they 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 could just get over it and be their own person. Or they were naturally deviants. Right natural deviance exactly dot com i just i i understand the point that that she's trying to make here um that there there definitely were people who uh were more extreme in their practices than others but that was encouraged yeah that was I encouraged by the cult do you think people knew we watched movies at home Watch TV Absolutely not. Absolutely and you would get not. judged for it if you did. Oh, I probably would have had a conference call. I mean, you know, if people had, had to... you were watching The Matrix, you probably would have been sent home. Or at least yes. got a very stern talking to. Nah, uh, but yeah, I was in an important. Yeah, I was in a, I was in a, in a position that could not easily be replaced. Correct. <laughs> there was no backup. I knew you would love this. <laughs> I would love, Holly, if you're watching this, I would love to have a conversation with you. And I promise I will be professional and I won't lose it. The ball is in yeah. your court, Holly. Come on. Would love to talk to you. And I won't conveniently edit our conversation. You can state your arguments and opinions. But the fact that she doesn't want to do that and just wants to make her own documentary, I think she knows she's full of shit. Usually people like her, I think, don't know that. I think that they, they live in their own little world. I mean, she's she's got nine kids and she's a certified parental educator from I don't know where. Um, so... She very well could believe what she's saying, but I don't know. Maybe she needs to go. Maybe she, watching this, she can see where I've taken these pieces where she says this, and then she says this, and it's like, but that doesn't jive. It's <laughs> not know, lining up. It's not lining up. Yeah, I just... Um, the mental and logical gym gymnastics that she has to go through to try to justify what she's saying... That's a huge red flag right off the bat. This whole approach on her part of victim blaming, of yeah. you know, essentially placing the responsibility on children is reprehensible. Um, but people do it. People do it. She is not the only one. And obviously... IBLP, the shiny, happy people cult is still alive and well. Well, maybe not well, but they're still they're still kicking out there in big Sandy, Texas. I, I don't even know what to say. It's a lot yeah. to unpack. It's it's just so crazy what she's saying here and and the the hoops that she is jumping through to try to justify the shiny, happy people cult. I mean, it just it blows me away. Let's just talk about her background for a second. Let's just talk about the vibe of this whole video. Um, she's not using the, the classic, you know, IBLP high pitched voice. So I'll give her that. Um, but everything else that she's doing here with her own background music that she has such a problem with in the shiny, happy people documentary. I mean, when she's making points that she wants us to agree with, she's using this happy go lucky music. And if it was, if there was no music, we would have fallen asleep. Right. Quite possibly. Um, I love your little twinkle lights on the desk. That's kind of a cool, cool little effect there. Some. 
I'm gonna yeah. get you a curtain. She's got she's got good, you know, background lighting. I mean, quite honestly, her her setup is pretty nice. I still don't know what's going on with this bulldog person in the back. I would love to know what that's all about. It does look a lot like you, Bryce. It does look a lot like me. I'm flattered. Uh, I mean, the beard also, would need to be longer. Also, where can I get it? <laughs> obviously, the beard would have to be quite a bit longer. Yeah, That's I know, not quite as I luscious as yours. Um, I would love to know what that full sign says. I'm almost positive that's a, a live, laugh, love. I mean, you might be able to pick it up at uh, Target in the Magnolia section or something. Oh, I guarantee she shops <laughs> at Hobby Lobby. Guarantee. Ooh. Probably loves Mr. Oh, Green. Man. What does that jar say in the back there? Is it do you have the do you have the original video on your end that you can blow up and see what that says? Collect moments, not things. Oh, <laughs> cute. Oh, I'm gonna get that tattooed. Oh. Just on my back. Just First like, tattoo? Collect big. moments, not things, just full back piece. Yeah. With the mason jar, or are you just gonna get mm, words? Maybe. I mean, the mason jar is really kind of pulling it all together for me. It's always hilarious to me when when those little, you know, pithy statements are are on a thing that she purchased, or maybe she made it herself. <laughs> but still, it's a thing that you've got reminding you to collect moments, not things. We're 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 just we're like we're trying to just hold back now and be like, okay, we don't really need to uh, yeah. roast her. <laughs> I, yeah, I I don't want to just go in and and roast her the way that I want to because there's so much you know I don't want to attack another person obviously um that's an ad ad hominem argument or whatever um so I don't want to discredit her just based on you know how repulsive she may or may not be um but I would also I like I said I would like to have a conversation with her um that's that's going to be up to her because the door is open on my end, Holly. Um, whether or not you choose to take us up on that offer, 100% up to you, obviously. Um, but to me, it says a lot if you're not willing to have a conversation with two two guys that actually did grow up in the cult, unlike you. You didn't go to the compounds. You never talked to Bill Gothard. Your only experience was tangential with this family that supposedly you were good friends with but Bryce you even said that she got tired of them because yeah. it was so extreme it was so extreme which is once again what the cult promoted I yep. just I can't emphasize that enough though the whole argument that she's basing her little video on is that the principles are good if you don't apl apply them to the extreme. Well, that's what it did. That was the nature of the cult. And still didn't really hear which principles she agreed with, other than she mentioned interpretation of the Bible. Yeah. I, I mean, just, just the fact that they believed in Jesus, that makes it okay? Anybody that did apply this to the extreme, trust me, they were applauded. Yes. Okay. They got points. Absolutely. And the ones that didn't, didn't get the calls. You know, my, my mother was extremely proud when I was, I got the phone call to be a part of the pilot project. Of course. She was like, Oh, you know, we've made it. You know, I, was like, mm -hmm. I don't even know how my name came up. <laughs> yeah. I think what we need to do here, Bryce, is we need to talk to a couple other ex cult members, uh, about their thoughts on oh, yes. what Holly has to say and just kind of, get their opinion on whether you know <laughs> they had the freedom to choose uh as members of the shiny happy people cult while they were still under their umbrella of authority or even uh, while chad was in a foreign country yeah uh what was supposed to do go to the embassy did you have like, independence like do you feel like you could make your own decisions and come oh to your own gosh. conclusions chad or lindsey williams um what's your take on that so I think I think we're uh, we'll do a follow up on this. Maybe a live stream. Maybe the live stream is the best approach, uh, just to kind of get their opinion on uh, on what Holly has to say. And maybe maybe they won't be so reserved <laughs> in their analysis of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, y'all, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with more on Holly and her. 
take on the shiny happy people cult please like comment and subscribe uh you can check out our online merch store friendswithdavy.com we've got all kinds of cool t-shirts and hoodies available we've also got bryce's customer service survivor line mm -hmm. of merch so go check it out and we will see you soon we love you